Published 1848 Est, the 7th of November 2017 Updated 0301 Est, the 8th of November 2017 Pretty Patel cancelled engagements in Africa today amid signs she is on the verge of being sacked. The aid secretary is on the brink after two further secret meetings with Israeli officials emerged on top of the 12 that had already been revealed. The latest developments appear to have hardened the mood in Downing Street, where there had already been fury at Miss Patel's freelancing. The minister is said to be holed up at a hotel in Nairobi, having dropped plans to fly to Uganda with Trade Secretary Liam Fox. It is not clear whether she has been ordered to return to the UK, the row over Miss Patel's extraordinary breach of government protocol while on a family holiday to Israel surfaced last week, but erupted again on Monday when she admitted there were more undeclared meetings, including with Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu. Mrs May only learned about the initial 12 meetings when they were reported in the media on Friday, the day after she hosted Mr Netanyahu in London. Priti Patel hinted that UK aid cash could be handed to the Israeli army during her secret meetings on a family holiday. Downing Street confirmed to Dames May demanded an apology from Miss Patel on Monday and formally reprimanded her, hoping that would draw a line under the furore. However, it has now been revealed that she held two further unauthorized meetings with senior Israeli political figures which were not attended by UK government officials. Miss Patel narrowly avoided the sack after the PM decided she could not risk destabilizing the government further after Sir Michael Fallon quit over UAL harassment claims last week. But Downing Street's stance toughened yesterday after it emerged that Miss Patel had tried to divert some of Britain's aid budget to humanitarian work by the Israeli army in the disputed Golan Heights. Britain accuses Israel of occupying the territory illegally. Number 10 indicated that she did not mention the proposal in talks to clear the air with Mrs May on Monday, leaving the PM to hear the facts in a BBC report. The Prime Minister's official spokesman said no one, least of all the Secretary of State herself, is pretending she handled this well, that is why she apologised and the PM reminded her of her responsibilities. Tory MPs refused to come to her aid yesterday during a common statement on her conduct in which she faced renewed calls to resign. Theresa May pictured leaving No. 10 last night summoned Ms Patel for a dressing down yesterday but has not sacked the minister despite the extraordinary revelations Ms Patel admitted on Monday that she held 12 secret meetings with Israeli ministers, officials, businessmen and charity bosses during a two-week holiday with her husband and son in August. She also admitted giving the misleading account of the visit when details of the trip began to emerge on Friday. She was accompanied by Lord Pollack, honorary president of the Conservative Friends of Israel lobby group, which has given the Tories almost £400,000. No officials were present at the meetings and no minutes were taken. The Foreign Office was not informed until August 24 after they had taken place. Yotam Peliza, of the Israel organization, which Miss Patel met, said the meeting had been arranged two weeks in advance, suggesting it was fixed before she left the UK. Pretty Patel held 12 separate meetings and engagements on her family holiday without officials and without clearing them through the usual channels. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu Yuval Rotem, Israeli Foreign Ministry Gilad Edon, Minister for Public Security, Information and Strategic Affairs Yair Lapid. Leader of Yesh Atid Israid, emergency humanitarian aid NGO DR Eliza in Bell Pairs Program for Global Innovation Dinner organized by the Pairs Program with Sivanyari, Innovation Africa, Glenn Yago Milken Institute, Yosef Abramovitz, Energy of Global Capital, Man Winston, American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, Time Tabe, Mitrelli Group Visit to Save a Child's Heart, DR Hirschfield, Shimon Hefferts, Galilee International Management Institute Meeting with with a group of startups with a focus on Africa Vital Capital, Mobile Loud, Equitel Health, Cassett Orthopedics, Limited, Nuffiltration Limited, Fair Planet. Jean Jude Spater C. Shapiro, and Pablo Kaplan, Wheelchairs of Hope The DFID did not respond to requests for information. Number 10 refused to say yesterday whether Ms. Patel broke the ministerial code. But Mrs May has asked Cabinet Secretary Sir Jeremy Hayward to tighten it to so ministers cannot hold secret meetings with foreign governments.
Labour claimed Miss Patel was guilty of four separate breaches of the code and called for her to resign. Cato Samor, the party's international development spokesman, said it is hard to think of a more black and white case of breaking the ministerial code of conduct, but rather than change the minister, the prime minister somehow decided the code itself needed changing. Miss Patel was absent from the Commons during questions about her conduct because she was flying to Africa. Instead, Middle East Minister Alistair Burt told MPs that she had tabled proposals to use aid money to assist the humanitarian work of the Israeli Defense Force in the Golan Heights, adding that it had been ruled out immediately by the Foreign Office as not appropriate. Manuel Hussassian, the Palestinian Authority's ambassador to the UK, described the revelations as shocking last night and questioned last night why Ms. Patel made no effort to balance her meetings by talking to them. Ms. Patel swerved a summons to the House of Commons to answer questions on her secret summit as she is flying to Africa on a pre-arranged visit today. Alistair Burt, sent to the Commons in Ms. Patel's absence, said the aid secretary was in the air as he explained why she was not at the dispatch box. Shadow Aid Secretary Kato Samor said Ms. Patel should either be sent for a formal investigation or do the decent thing and resign. Ms. Patel's deputy claimed they were not particularly secret meetings and insisted if I were on a visit to Israel I would have wanted a schedule just like this. Mr. Burt did admit he would have told Britain's Israeli ambassador had he planned such a schedule. Conservative MPs failed to rally behind Ms. Patel during the Commons debate. The handful of Tory backbenchers who took part criticised her actions. Mrs May's official spokesman confirmed the issue of a field hospital was discussed by Ms Patel in her meetings. He said the Secretary of State did discuss ways to provide medical support to Syrian refugees who are wounded and cross into the Golan Heights. The Israeli army runs field hospitals there to care for Syrians wounded in the civil war. There is no change in policy in this area. The UK does not provide any financial support to the Israeli army, Mrs May's spokesman insisted Ms Patel was absolutely clear in her meeting with the Prime Minister yesterday. He said the new revelation was not a surprise to Downing Street and no policy change had been made. Alistair Burt, sent to the Commons Picture 2 explain the situation in Ms Patel's absence, said the aid secretary was in the air as he explained her absence. The spokesman added the Secretary of State has been clear with number 10 that on no other occasions while a minister as she organised meetings with a foreign government minister outside the normal channels while on holiday, in the Commons, Ms Osamu demanded to know what Ms Patel had been up to on the trip while accompanied by Lord Pollack, the honorary president of Conservative Friends of Israel which lobbies on behalf of Israel. She told MPs it is hard to think of a more black and white case of breaking the ministerial code of conduct but rather than change the minister, the prime minister somehow decided last night that it is the ministerial code itself that needs changing. Ms Osamor asked Mr Burt what was discussed in the meetings, and what pressure Ms Patel applied on her department when she returned to the UK. Ms Patel was offered negligible support from the Tory benches amid claims the minister was defending the indefensible. Former Minister Crispin Blunt went so far as to suggest Mr Burt should take her, very gently, in hand. Sir Hugo Swire said the public wanted transparency and accountability. He also said that organisations that lobby ministers should open their books. Shadow Aid Secretary Kate Osamor pictured in the Commons today said Ms Patel should either be sent for a formal investigation or do the decent thing and resign Chris Bryant, a Labour former minister, accused Ms Patel of having misled the public and said of Mr Burt it's a real shame that it's the minister who's acting as an air raid shelter here to be honest, and I think if he reflects later he won't be proud of what HES done today. Mr Burt faced several questions over when Ms Patel made the Foreign Office aware of her meetings, with the Minister replying My understanding is Foreign and Commonwealth Office officials became aware of Ms Patel's private visit on August 24 during the course of her visit. I don't have the dates of all the meetings.
I suspect it's after the meetings took place but I believe it was Ms Patel who told the official abroad that she was there and she was having the visits, and in a letter to Mrs May, Labour's Shadow Cabinet Office Minister John Trickett said the PM should either call in her independent adviser on ministerial standards Sir Alex Allen estate publicly and explain your reasons for why Pretty Patel retains your confidence despite clear breaches of the ministerial code. Mr Trickett said there were strong grounds to believe that Ms Patel had broken the code's requirements for openness, collective responsibility, honesty and performing only those duties allocated to them by the PM, given that it is reported he met Pretty Patel yesterday and reminded her of her responsibilities under the ministerial code, I believe it important that either you or the cabinet secretary publicly set out whether you have determined that Pretty Patel failed to adhere to the code and if that is the case, why she still remains a member of your government, wrote Mr Trickett. Former Conservative Minister Crispin Blunt pictured today in the Commons went so far as to suggest Mr Burt should take her, very gently, in hand as the extraordinary row broke yesterday, the International Development Secretary blamed her enthusiasm to engage for her failure to Mrs Mayor Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson about the dozen high-level encounters, as well as saying sorry for the stunning breach of protocol, Mrs Patel was also forced to make an humiliating clarification of comments last week in which she appeared appear to deny there were any more meetings to disclose. The startling admissions immediately raised doubts about whether Mrs Patel can continue in her role with Labour calling for her to quit and some senior Tories saying she would be toast under normal circumstances, one Conservative MP told Mail Online it showed that Mrs May's authority among her top team was completely shot, in a humiliating confession, Mrs Patel said in a statement on the DFID website this summer I travelled to Israel, on a family holiday paid for myself. While away I had the opportunity to meet a number of people and organisations. I am publishing a list of who I met. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office was aware of my visit while it was underway. International Development Secretary Priti Patel met Israeli officials during a private holiday. Mr Johnson, pictured in Downing Street yesterday, previously played down the row but there is thought to have been considerable anger behind the scenes and hindsight. I can see how my enthusiasm to engage in this way could be misread, and how meetings were set up and reported in a way which did not accord with the usual procedures. I am sorry for this and I apologize for it. My first and only aim as the Secretary of State for International Development is to put the interests of British taxpayers and the world's poor at the front of our development work. A number 10 spokesman said the Prime Minister welcomes the Secretary of State's clarification about her trip to Israel and has accepted her apology for her handling of the matter. The Prime Minister met the Secretary of State this morning to remind her of the obligations which exist under the Ministerial Code. Mrs Patel was accompanied by a Tory peer Lord Pollack, who set up the meetings. The statement suggested Mrs Patel had started to shift policy following her visit. On her return from Israel, the Secretary of State commissioned departmental work on humanitarian and development partnership between Israel and the UK, and on disability, it said. Yesterday's statement also clarified two quotes given to The Guardian last week in which the minister sought to dismiss the row. She was reported as saying that Boris knew about the visit, but embarrassingly conceded today this quote may have given the impression that the Secretary of State had informed the Foreign Secretary about the visit in advance. The Secretary of State would like to take this opportunity to clarify that this was not the case. The Foreign Secretary did become aware of the visit, but not in advance of it. Mrs Patel also admitted that a quote in which she insisted the stuff that is out there as it was lacking in precision. This quote may be read as implying that the Secretary of State was saying that the meetings that had so far been publicly reported were the only ones which took place on her visit. The statement said, the Secretary of State would like to take the opportunity to correct this impression. She is clear that other meetings also took place on her visit, in addition to those which had been publicly reported at the time of her making these statements. The FCO are clear that UK interests were not damaged or affected by the meetings on this visit. Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu was in London for talks with Mrs May and Tamarka century a century since the Balfour Declaration. 
Mrs. May did not know of the meeting between Mr. Netanyahu and Ms. Patel during the talks. Mrs. May's spokesman insisted the ministerial code was not explicit in the area of meetings with foreign leaders as he sought to explain why Ms. Patel had not been referred to the cabinet office for investigation. Asked why the aid secretary's case was not referred while Mark Garnier was for sending his secretary to buy toys, the spokesman said they are entirely different matters. Ms. Patel did not offer to resign at the meeting with Mrs. May, the PM spokesman said. Asked how the Foreign Office has established since Friday morning the UK national interest was not damaged, Mrs. May's spokesman said only that officials were clear it had not been. Shadow Secretary of State for International Development Kate Osamor said Mrs. Patel should resign or submit to a investigation. Today's statement is a desperate last-ditch attempt by Priti Patel to save her job. It has now emerged that, contrary to her statement on Friday, the Foreign Secretary was never told in advance about her meetings in Israel which we have only now discovered included meetings with Prime Minister Netanyahu and with the Foreign Ministry, she said. Not only does it look like she might have breached the ministerial code, she has now been caught misleading the British public. If she doesn't now resign, then Theresa May must immediately refer the issue to the Cabinet Office for a investigation.